Thanks so much for being here with us. Uh, excited to have you in your music studio. <laughs> Andy, thank you for having me. Yeah, well, a bit of an introduction. I'll, I'll let you provide your background, but a bit of an introduction to people that are listening. Ben and I got introduced um, by one of our clients who said, hey, have you heard of this social impact chat and this guy, Jeremy Brown? And, you know, we were like, no, we haven't. And so I think he sent us the link to your, your Slack group. It must have been, I think, two and a half years ago. And that's when we initially reached out and chatted because we were doing so much of the same same work and, and focus, especially in the Bay Area with, with tech companies and helping them give back. So uh, two and a half years later, I think almost everything has changed in our world, uh, but we're still here. So that's uh, exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. It's wow. Two years ago. It feels like, <laughs> it feels like 10 years ago, um, but yeah, it, it definitely. So the social impact chat Slack group definitely has grown quite a bit since then. I think, let's see, two years ago, around that time when you probably joined, Ooh, we are probably around maybe 400 people or so, I want to say. And since, you know, obviously COVID hit and everyone's virtual now, um, it definitely has exploded. Um, now over a thousand individuals, both from the corporate space to the nonprofit sector to students and just individuals who are interested in making that career transition into social impact it's been quite the adventure and, and just i love seeing all the engagement and all the interaction going on in the in the group so it's been it's been fun to to witness yeah no absolutely maybe taking a step back you know how did you get into this industry and for those who don't know kind of mention a few of the different things you're doing because you're doing a lot in the space and would love to hear kind of what initially got you into the this this uh, environment yeah. Um, so my background is in tech. So I've been in tech pretty much my entire career, um, mainly in the marketing sector or uh, department at the various companies I've worked at. And so let me take a step back and walk you through how all this got started. So we got to go back to 2011. That's when I graduated college. I've joined a really large company based in San Francisco. This is a company that had a lot of resources. So a lot of money, a lot of people around the world. We were not struggling by any stretch of the imagination. So I was there for a little over a year and not one time did we ever make any donations or give back to our community. Now, I'm new to my career, so it didn't register with me until I left that company and joined a very small startup. And one of the executives at that startup happened to come from Salesforce. So he brought with him this whole philanthropic mindset and he wanted the company to not only obviously make money and grow, but also do good. And so what happened was the very first week on the job, we went out and volunteered as a team. And for me, that was a totally new experience that I absolutely loved. And so we would do that for every new group of employees that joined the company. And I remember like it was yesterday, I remember thinking, okay, this is a totally different experience. Why is it that this small startup with very limited resources is able to do more for the community than the company I just came from? And so that got me on this path of thinking, okay, we're doing this for a couple of reasons. Number one, it just, it just, it matters. It, it makes sense for a company that takes from the community to give back to the community. And number two, it was a really awesome way to bring a team together. You're having a shared experience, you're making an impact together. It was just a very rich experience. And so fast forward about three months after my initial start date, that's when I started having the, these ideas around, okay, is there anything that I can do to encourage more companies to actually get involved? I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I did have a background in organizing events. And so I thought to myself, okay, what if I organize an event and just invited various companies to come out and volunteer alongside each other? So long story short, that became Startups Give Back. That was my first organization and the, my first step into social impact. Um, and since then, I've done well over 50 volunteering events, have chapters around the United States and even in Canada. But during that time, I was also organizing social impact meetups. And so they started off small and I would probably do one uh, probably once a quarter. And then all of a sudden, that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I'm thinking, okay, there's something here. Now, is there a way to expand that? Maybe do an annual conference in the Bay Area. Obviously not a revolutionary idea. There's plenty of kind of social impact oriented conferences, but 
that's when I was interacting a lot more with social impact leaders. And then COVID hit. <laughs> we couldn't do in-person stuff anymore. And so now I'm sitting there thinking, okay, can't do it in person, but we happen to live in a time where we have some really remarkable online tools, mainly for free. Is there anything that I can use to actually create that kind of offline networking opportunity, but on the online side? And obviously Slack was available. It's free, uh, easy to use. Most people know how to use it anyways, because they use it at their companies or their organizations. And so that became Social Impact Chat, um, which is owned by Social Impact World, which is the community for social impact leaders. And so that's how we got to this point today. You know, what's interesting about that is, uh, from my perspective, I think what this community needs, and I think the social impact community is relatively new, right? You have the yeah. trailblazers like the Salesforce, but even some of the largest companies are still not even thinking about this. And that means the talent pool and people who are leading these CSR teams are, from our perspective, just they need as many resources as they can get. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's why I think what you built with the chat is so powerful because it's a casual, more, um, more low key than going to a conference. You know, you can reach out to people on there, get their perspective and people are so willing to share. It's, you know, it's just a group that wants to give back by nature of who we are. And so I actually think it's an awesome pivot. You know, I would never say thanks to COVID for anything, but I think what you created, it's, it's really unique for us going the, the conference route. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, and yeah, you're, you're totally right. I feel like what's interesting about the social impact space is how open people are. And like you said, how willing they are to share. And it's really, be, it comes down to one thing. We're not really competing against each other. We're competing in the sense that we have this ultimate goal that we're all trying to achieve, a better society, better environment, things like that. And so it behooves us to actually work together and collaborate to progress things forward. And so, yeah, the, the community is just amazing. Just like I mentioned a little while ago, the engagement and all the interactions that are happening, it's, it's just been remarkable to, to witness. Yeah. Now I'd be curious as you think over the last nine months, what are there, are there a few common things that keep coming up in the social impact chat? You know, where are people struggling the most? Um, what do you say over the past nine months? Yeah, I would say starting and scaling a program. I feel like we're at this point where companies are starting to wake up and realize, hey, social impact isn't this fluffy thing, right? It, it has real tangible value, both from an employee perspective, but also from a business perspective. And so now we're starting to see a lot more roles open up for you know, social impact manager or ESG, DE&I, things like that. And so now the challenge is how do you start a social impact program how do you scale it? And more importantly, how, how can you create something that, that stands the tests of time? You know, I, I just came out of a, another kind of uh, virtual meetup and one of the topics uh, that came up was creating a long-term social impact program. And, and what goes into that? What kinds of things you need to think about? Because it's not just the one-off volunteering here and there. There's so much more that, frankly, a leader needs to do to create something that stands the test of time and that the company feels that they get value from, from a business perspective, but also from an employee engagement perspective. So I would say right now in the past nine months, that's the biggest thing is how do you start a program and then how do you actually scale it for the long term? Yeah. I mean, I think you're so right. I mean, we hear all the time, you know, I think the, this, this, in, this industry started with just hours of volunteering. Hey, we're judging ourselves by hours of yep. volunteering and that's a fine metric. You know, it's great. Every hour of volunteering is good, but largely you want to think about the total impact on the company. And so how do you migrate from hours of volunteering to, you know, judging an empowered employee who's mm -hmm. going to stay at the company longer versus overall impact for the, you know, world that you're trying to make. And it's not an easy shift. And I don't think there's that many answers, but I think that's one of the cool things about bringing the group together is they can brainstorm and, you know, really come to, you know, advancing and, and really growing the industry. Yeah, no one really has it figured out. You know, there are some companies that are more advanced, like Salesforce, for example, you know, they started a long time ago. So they have, you know, they have more insights than the average company, but no one really has it figured out. And so that's the cool thing about the Slack group is that you have 
people from all walks of life. You have folks that work at Salesforce, that work at LinkedIn, and some of the other big wigs in the tech space, all under kind of one umbrella, having conversations about how to actually create programs, how do you scale programs, how do you engage stakeholders, how do you get executive buy-in, which is also a hot topic. And is, I feel like it's always going to be a hot topic because not every executive has fully bought into social impact. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're, you're totally right. And I think one of the things we always hear and talk about is what happens to social impact in a recession? Because, you know, this industry has yeah. really just gotten started after 2008, I would say. And so we've had an incredible 13 years where companies have been generating excess profit. And so it's really easy then to you know, understand we do this, it's going to help, you know, retention and engagement. But what happens when there's not all the profits around? Are they still prioritizing it? Um, and that's why I think it's so important to have this group come together because, you know, from your members, and these companies, they've started coming out with such good data. And, and that data and really bringing the industry together to share the data is what's going to create the, you know, the, the proof that, that this industry is doing great for these companies, not only the world. Yeah, you bring up an interesting point about recessions. I mean, we're not in a recession right now, but the market is a little bit volatile right now. And, you know, people are kind of freaking out. So it'd be interesting to see how companies adjust to that and how, you know, social impact leaders who are manning these programs, how they adjust to that, um, what's going on in the market too. Yeah. And, and your point around the designing the programs, I mean, ideally you're designing long-term 10 year plus programs and, mm -hmm. you know, short-term budgets shouldn't shouldn't have a large impact, but you know, in, in the business world, they always will. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. So one, one other question I have for you, obviously it's more than just a chat, right? Because part of the reason we're recording this is I want everyone to know about this. So they're signing up and they are benefiting from the resources and benefiting from the collaboration. You know, talk a little bit, you're obviously doing a lot of, you know, I call an AMA, uh, but yeah. talk about the, 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 that a little bit, as well as some of these new webinars and kind of how to's and guides that you started to do to support the community. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. So, uh, social impact chat, isn't just about the chatting aspect of things. Um, when you think about social impact world as a whole, and we have an event series uh, that's called breaking the social impact for people who are looking to break into the social impact space. Uh, we've actually partnered with general assembly on that for the past couple of years. Uh, we have workshops where, you know, people will talk about you know, how do you create a program? How do you get executive buy-in? So a lot of the hot topics that are on the minds of, you know, social impact leaders who are seasoned veterans, but also kind of new to the space. Um, there's obviously the Slack channel, but in the Slack channel, we also have our AMAs where uh, you will bring a social impact leader from LinkedIn or Twitter or whoever, and just for 30 minutes, have them answer questions from the community. And so this has been something that we've been doing for quite a while now. And it's a lot of fun because it's, it's really easy to do. You know, you don't have to, you know, as a person answering the questions, you don't have to take time, too much time away from your, you know, your day to day. Um, it, you can be at lunchtime and just flip open the Slack uh, chat and start chatting away and answering questions. But a lot of really interesting insights have come from those AMAs. And a lot of the members of the community have learned a lot from them. There's a, it's a huge value add. And so that's also a component to what we do. And then also we have a bunch of other resources and we're trying to connect social impact leaders with uh, companies that have really good products and services that they might find valuable at, for, as their program scale. So there's a lot of components to this, but ultimately what we're trying to do, the, the mission and the, and the actual goal is to turn the corporate world into a force for good. So that's the, the kind of the guiding light and everything that we build around that um, kind of steers towards that. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's, the cool thing is that mission that what you just said, I think if you polled the audience uh, in your chat or, you know, anything related to social impact world, I think that's everyone's mission, right? And that's kind of interestingly what drives us, um, drives us all. We all do it in different ways, but I think that's all what got us, you know, into the space. No, that's what got me to the space too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now the hardest question, what is your favorite nonprofit and why? Hmm. Okay. So I actually have two, if you don't mind. Go for it. And disclaimer, I'm on the board of directors for one of them. But if I wasn't on the board, I would still say that they're one of my favorite nonprofits. Um, so the first nonprofit is Sea Hugger. Uh, so Sea Hugger's mission is to um, basically eradicate plastic pollution in our oceans. And 
they do that through education as well as in-person events and volunteering. And they have this really amazing camp for kids where they teach kids about the ocean and um, kind of the, the problem around plastic pollution and things like that. And, you know, I got wind of this organization. Uh, and again, I'm on the board of directors for the organization, but I got wind of them uh, back in, I want to say 2017. So I had an event in San Francisco, where I actually invited the founder of the organization to come and talk about her nonprofit and the problem that she's trying to solve. And just absolutely love the mission and what she's trying to do. And one of the coolest things that I saw in that presentation was they have these little trummels that they take to the beach. And when you're doing a beach cleanup, you know, you have buckets of sand, you pour the sand into the trummel, the sand sifts through, and all that's left is the garbage and the plat the microplastics that you don't see. And it's like this epiphany, like, I'm going to the beach. But if you have kids, you're going to the beach with your kids, you're playing in the sand, you don't know that there's all these microplastics in the sand, you don't see it. And that was just this kind of eye opening experience. And ever since then, I was, I've been, I was a big fan of that nonprofit and just so happened that she reached out and said, Hey, you want to be on the board? I was like, yes, I'd love that. <laughs> the other uh, nonprofit uh, that is my favorite is a or organization called Literati. And so Literati, what they do is it's this really big database of trash. And so how it works is you, you download the app, you go on a walk or wherever you're going. If you see, you know, a thing of trash, a, a can, a bottle, a wrapper, take a picture of it. They crowdsource all of the trash. And what it enables you to do is see from a brand perspective, which brands are in terms of trash, the most out there. It could be Coca-Cola cans everywhere, for example. And so that data just, it helps bring some clarity around like what trash is out there, who's behind it. And from a company perspective, you're Coca-Cola, for example, and you're saying, okay, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of our cans out there. Is there anything we can do from a sustainability perspective to eradicate that issue? And so, yeah, that Literati has definitely expanded and grown over the years. And it's been amazing to watch them. And it all started, the founder, it all started with him going on a walk with his kids. And his kids would say, hey, why is there trash over here? And that was a light bulb for him. And so now, like I said, it's the app. You take a picture of it. You, you know, write out what the, the trash is, the brand behind it. And then they also map it. So you can go to a global map and see all the trash around the world. It's really interesting. That, that is interesting. It also solves the prioritization issue, right? Because as we yes. think about trash, it's like, all right, let's try to convince the whole world that we, like the whole, every company in the world to stop, you know, producing things where why don't we focus on the biggest the biggest issues first and focus our efforts there. Exactly. You might see that a lot of the trash happens to be plastic straws, you know, as a, as a, a restaurant, is there anything you can do around that? Maybe have uh, metal straws or, or something like that, where it's like, you know, the, the plastic isn't getting into the environment. Yeah. I love it. Those are both two nonprofits I haven't heard of before. I highly suggest you look them up because they're amazing. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely will. I've, I, I've heard of some similar organizations to Sea Hugger, and yep. I've, I, I've actually seen that um, experience myself with the sifting of the sand. And, and what amazed me was, was just realizing how much plastic was there that I didn't recognize. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's a good analogy. Like you don't see everything that's happening and you're until you, you know, you've, you, you've entered the matrix. You don't know the matrix exists in some ways. And, and that's such a good metaphor for, um, for so many nonprofits out there. Exactly. It's, it's like I said, it's, it's an epiphany. It's, it's really eye opening. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, where can people follow along? How would you recommend people join along what you're doing? What would be the best way to get in contact with you? Yeah, well, to get into contact with me, I am at Social Jeremy on pretty much every major social media platform. Um, in terms of Social Impact World and Social Impact Chat, if you want to join the Slack group, go to socialimpactworld.com slash chat, request an invite, and then we'll send you an invite and you'll be right in there. Awesome. And we'll put all that information uh, in these notes and uh, highly recommend everyone can join. We've been, been in along for the ride and it's just a highly informative group. And so, um, yeah, I would highly recommend everyone join. I appreciate it, Andy. Yeah, well, thanks again, Jeremy, and get back to producing the music. Absolutely. Take care.